Thank you, Lulu, for accepting this invitation today to reflect on our experience continuing our work in Somalia in the context of COVID-19 for LAMPS, the Learning and Monitoring Program in Somalia. As you were the program manager, would you like to introduce it? Sure, uh, thank you for having me, Laurie. Uh, so LAMPS was our flagship program that we delivered in Somalia on behalf half of the UK Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. It ran from November 2016 to March 2021. We mostly conducted third party monitoring to support better reporting and um, uh, of results and risk management for FCDO Somalia. Overall, we led TPM of over 900 FCDO implementing partner activities across all federal member states, Somaliland and the Banadir administration. We managed a team of over 35 locally contracted enumerators and field managers across the country. The project management team was based in our Kenya office, supported by a senior services manager and an operations officer based in London. Um, till there, I'm happy to hand over to you, Laurie, for a brief on the operating context in Somalia. So the relationship between the federal government of Somalia and the five member states is racked by deep-rooted tensions. And different states meant different teams uh, who knew communities, who spoke the right languages, and who had local contacts with uh, local clans. Um, also, disruptive droughts, floods, and swarms of locusts further destabilized the region, increasing rural poverty and large-scale urban migration, reducing physical access to respondents. And also, Al-Shabaab, the Al-Qaeda-affiliated groups, is a severe threat in the region and require complex security arrangements. That being said, the issues and events were often limited to certain areas and certain time. Um, they were flaring up and going down quickly. So constant monitoring and close coordination with the FCDO's implementing partners enabled the teams to navigate this uh, challenging environment safely. So Lulu, the first case of COVID-19 was recorded in Somalia on the 16th of March, 2020. How was our work affected? Just like many governments of the world, the federal government of Somalia tried to contain the spread of COVID-19 by closing public institutions, prohibiting social gatherings, restricting in-country movement, and imposing dust to dawn curfews. We therefore had to adjust our programming given that a lot of restrictions imposed created movement challenges for our field team. So we increased the frequency of remote calls, but faced challenges related to poor communication network and difficulty establishing fast contact, especially with government respondents as they did not pick up calls from our monitors when they did not recognize the number. Again, COVID-19 also created reliance on remote working, which can be an excuse for reduced engagement and ultimately accountability. So in cases where in-person interviews were possible, there was some social stigma around COVID-19. So people who donned personal protective gear were thought to be carriers of the novel coronavirus and non-believers of Allah. The use of PPE therefore impacted the availability and willingness of respondents to engage with our enumerators. Over to you, Laurie, for any additional comments. Thanks. Yes, I remember all of that. Um, COVID-19 brought new challenges to an already complex and insecure environment. Al-Shabaab persistent attacks against security forces, government officials, and civilians further strained and frustrated the government's efforts aimed at timing the spread of the disease, exposing our teams to a higher risk of collateral exposure uh, to crossfire, suicide bombings, and targeted assassinations on high value target that we often interviewed. So we had to be very careful in terms of safety and safeguarding and make sure we adapted and responded quickly to new challenges and anticipate new ones. I'd like to say that the team was split among Somalia, Kenya, and the UK. So it was not easy to circulate information across the whole team. Yet it was essential to maintain a shared understanding of the, the local context and to be ready at all levels for whatever came at us. And I think we were ready before COVID. Uh, that's why we managed to deliver during the outbreak. But COVID-19, by impacting all aspects of the program from the communities 
through to the London headquarters really brought the opportunity to refine our approach, connect all the dots, and increase our system's resilience uh, to dis disruptions and enabled us to ensure the continuity of our services in crisis-affected environments where people's needs are the greatest. And ma major disruptions will happen again. Afghanistan is facing right now um, transformational changes as we speak. So if I have one message today is to say that risk mapping needs to be taken up to the next level to scrutinize the overlap between technical delivery, operations and context. Lulu, to conclude this call, if you had one recommendation to give to program managers like you who um, deliver in complex settings and face disruptions, what would it be? Well, I'd say uh, when the context changes, definitely the needs change as well. So it's therefore important to build in sufficient flexibility in the program and be creative in how you're flexible. That is, develop new types of data collection methods, new ways of engaging respondents, new methods of triangulating findings, basically to allow the program to quickly pivot and remain relevant to the client, the implementing partners, and the community. Thank you, Laurie. Thank you.